friends, it's Peggy Noe from PrettyPaperCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today is December 17th, 2021, and it's one week from Christmas. And we're just getting all excited here. Ellie's got her pretty red, ruffly ribbon bow. That's one of our Stampin' Up! ribbons, and I like it so much. And so we're just we're just getting excited. We've got all kinds of things going on. I've been getting a whole bunch of Christmas cards um, from many of you, and I want to show some of those today. So I'm going to show you some of those in a little bit. Um, I'm just I'm just getting excited, thinking about making a Christmas meal and um, having some out of town company. She wants to look that other direction today, so I'll just. I'll just put her that way. <laughs> so, how are all of you? It's good to see you today. I'm, I'm glad you're popping on. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to have a good time today. And um, I wanted to tell you, first of all, that we're not going to have any Friday Lives for two weeks because it'll be Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. But please, hi Diane, good to see you. Hi Pam. Good to see both of you, but please come on Wednesdays. I do my Wednesday lives at three o'clock, just an hour earlier. And so please come on Wednesdays, the next two Wednesdays um, over the holidays. We still have stamping things to talk about and we need to do stamping to relax us, don't we? That's what I love to, to stamp and just play with colors and papers and ribbons. It's very relaxing and therapeutic. So we got, we've got to meet on the next two Wednesdays, so be sure to pop by. Um, so therefore, we'll, the prize that I, sh will, I'll award a prize today, but the one that I show you won't be, we won't be, um, I won't be awarding it until the 7th of January. But it's still going to be there, so make sure you say prize if you want it. So I'm going to put Ellie down, and let's take a look at the prize we had from last week. Um, was this fabulous um, assorted baker's twine pack and that I did my random number generator and that went to Hilda Mossi M-A-S-I she was from over on YouTube all my YouTube friends and hi to all my YouTube friends they're really getting the hang of this and they're putting prize all of them are putting prize down so Hilda make sure you contact me and uh, get me your address and email me at Peggy at prettypapercards.com so that I can get this out in the mail to you. Now, next week, hi Roz. Oh, your grandson, Clark. How are you, Clark? I'll just say hi, Clark. Good to have you watching. So, um, our prize for the next time is I hope some of you remember this an embossing buddy. Let me put it, see if I can get it where you can really see it without the, without the glare. So the embossing buddy, I think, is an essential tool for embossing. It's, I think it's full of cornstarch or something, I'm not really sure, but you use it on your paper before you emboss um, with the heat embossing, and it, it takes all the oils out so you get a better embossing. And I'm gonna use mine today because we're gonna do some embossing. And so I thought it would be a perfect time. I got Stampin' Up! used to carry them, they don't anymore, but, um, I got several before before they went out of stock, and so I want to give this to someone who says prize this week for the embossing buddy, okay? Oh, Clark, hi Clark, and you love to craft with, with your grandma, huh? That is so neat. I see that you guys want the embossing buddy. Good for you, because it is a great tool, great tool, and we're gonna use it today. News. Okay, news. Um, right now, I'm taking pre-orders only until Monday for my um, December class to go. Now, my December class to go is called um, No Cards for the New Year. And what it is, you get an entire pack, 20 whoops, note cards and envelopes from Stampin' Up. They come in a set. This is what you'll get in your kit, a set of 20 note cards and envelopes. You'll get a pack of um, 
in color designer series paper very beautiful you'll get a whole pack of that you'll get a package of in color jewels and these are beautiful um, I don't think I'm using them today but if you remind me maybe we'll stick one or two on these are I use them a lot a lot and what we're going to make is you're going to make 10 note cards you'll use half of your pack for all occasion all occasions in the upcoming year hi Jessica good to see you thanks for popping by and thank you for sharing so here I'm going to give you a quick glance of the of the note cards because I don't I don't like to show them too long because um, this is what you get when you buy the class it's $45 um, and here's the thank you card super cute here is congratulations super cute I designed these so they're all cute this is uh, congratulations no thinking of you and they're just darling I love these note cards easy to pop in the mail happy birthday I know the light is real bright and a sympathy card so you'll make two of each of those note cards you'll get all the supplies to create them except the stamp set now they it uses a lot of standard um, sentiments happy you saw them happy birthday and whatnot I did use the peaceful moment stamp set that's in our annual catalog it's in the Stampin up annual catalog um, if you want to add that on to your card kit it'll be tw uh, 20 it's $21 so the card kit itself with the 20 cards and envelopes all the all the ingredients to make 10 note cards two of each of those and all the other goodies is $45 if you want to add on the stamp set add another 21 and all you need to do is email me at Peggy at pretty and I'll send you a PayPal invoice or you can Venmo me if you use Venmo and then there's another one and I think I use that one too so the pre-order is only open until Monday the 20th at 6 p.m. so if you want the card kit the note cards for the new year make sure to let me know and then the other thing that's going fast that I really wanted to remind you about is my pretty adhesive pack and you know recently I added on handmade pom-poms my girlfriend um, made me and gave me these beautiful handmade pom-poms and they match the, the uh, container so well and it has my five favorite adhesives um, Multi-purpose glue, you know I use that a lot. Um, mini glue dots, dimensionals, regular and mini, and also then the Stamp and Seal Plus, and that is $38. And these have been going really fast. I, I just get everything ready for to have a certain amount ready to send out, and then they're sold, and then I have to order some more. So if you want the pretty adhesive pack, uh, let me know. Email me for that also. I'm hoping to set up a little, some type of a little shop right on my website so that you can buy things right from there as far as these little things that I sell. Um, so that might be coming in the works. Anthony, I'm so glad you popped on. Good to see you. All right. Now, I want to, sh I'm going to turn you down because I want to show you, many of you have been sending me Christmas cards and they are so pretty and I want to show you how pretty these cards are just so you can have a little glimpse of them some of the products are stampin up some of the products are not stampin up this is one of my favorites with this little uh, gnome girl with the braids isn't that super cute here's another darling one I can't remember the name of that set I wish I'd gotten it personally um, very cute stamp set this one is very neat this is from a girl who's one of my downline and this pulls out look at that isn't that super cute and then the card also opens I'm telling you you guys are so talented it, <clears throat> here's another beautiful one that opens like that isn't that pretty I love the coloring on that with the gold many of these are from my downline that's a real pretty one using the whimsical trees I recognize that stamp set this is a beautiful one I really like this of course because it's pink some of you know my favorite color is pink and people have been sending me pink Christmas cards which makes me so happy this is from my dear friend Sue Moore um, and just look at this card 
I can't believe how, I want to hold it up close so you can see it, how it, it is open there and she's got dimensionals in there. Isn't that just beautiful? Love that one. Um, here's one from my friend Brian King, and it's a note card. Note cards. Oh, my, my card is on your fireplace, Anthony. Thank you. Your first Stampin' Up! card from the U.S. And yours is here, too. I don't, I think I, I don't have yours right here. I, I might have showed it before. Um, I only grabbed the ones I've gotten in the last couple days, but I'm, I have a card from England, which pleases me to no end, because my sister used to live in England um, before she passed away, and so it's just dear to my heart. It means a lot that I have your card, Anthony. Thank you so much. So here's another cute one, and then this is another darling one. I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if all of these products are stamping up or not, but aren't those the cutest cards? I've just been having so much fun receiving them, and I thank you. So our project today is called the Pie Project because we're going to make some pies. And I, the reason we're doing it, I thought I was done with Christmas cards, but I'm getting hungry for Christmas dinner and I've been thinking about pumpkin pie. So I pulled back out my sweets and treats um, stamp set. I've got them all set to the side, the ones that are retiring. And I pulled it back out because it has this darling pie on it. And I really wanted to... Um, I really wanted to make a pie card, a pumpkin pie card, but I ended up making a, an apple card, apple pie card. This isn't the one we're going to make today, but I did make this one. Um, I added just gobs of ribbon, and I thought it was just super cute. And the sentiment is from the set, and it says, bring on Christmas. And there's my pie, the apple pie um, with the red pie dish. And then there's a little bit of green poking out because I decided it was a green apple pie. Green apples, right? We all know green apples. And then here's the card we're going to make today. This is the pie card we're going to make today. And I'm going to teach you a little technique that I think might be helpful also for any card. So this is our card, and let's just get started. I want to make sure to have enough time to show you. And we're going to start with the new technique. I'm going to use my... Um, stamp and pierce mat for some stamping. We're going to start by stamping the pie all over this background piece. This is real red and here's my pie stamp. This is a photopolymer stamp set and here it is right here and I'm going to get out my Versamark ink. We're going to use Versamark ink in two ways today. Um, most of you know that Versamark is the ink that you use when you're going to heat emboss and we're going to do that later but it's also used to give a watermark type look and that's what we're going to do now is just give it a watermark look thank you Kay um <laughs> Anthony's preparing his Easter card oh my goodness you're way ahead of me Anthony <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to stamp and get quite a bit of uh, ink let me see if I can make room oh did you notice my new background. Yes, I have a pretty new background. This is the first time using it, so I'm kind of initiating the new background. I like it. Okay, so I'm inking up my pie in Versamark ink, and I'm going to put the piece of cardstock in the direction that it's going to be when it's on the card, so I can kind of see exactly how I'm stamping. And then I'm just going to stamp this little pie and I'm pressing down hard so that it will really show. And I'm just going to stamp it all over to give a watermark look of the pie. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the video. Let me go back up and see. As it dries, it gets a little bit darker. And you just do arbitrary stamping. You know how to do that. Just stamp arbitrarily all around there to just make sure that you're getting the Versamark ink on the paper. And I'm going to concentrate more on the edges because that's really the only place it's going to show. Because we're going to we're going to put a put those other pies in in the center. You know what? I just remembered this card goes sideways. Well, that's okay. I'll turn it sideways. It goes horizontal. It just occurred to me because I made both of them this morning. I made the <clears throat> the horizontal and the 
and the portrait style. So all the more arbitrariness to our stamping here. Are you able to see how it's beginning to have the watermark look? It just gives kind of a pretty back, it's a way to give a background to something. Carry your theme on, and there we go. Now I'm gonna hold it, and if, you, if I hold it in a certain light, let me see, there, I think you can see it more. It, it really does show up, and I, I really like it. I'm gonna set my pad over to the side now, and we'll begin to put our card together. We'll start with the base. Our card base is our standard um, eight and a half by 11 scored at, you know, four, eight, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Numbers, not my favorite thing, you know, really. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go this way. Alrighty, and we're going to this is our background piece, and what I'm going to do, because this is going to be a green apple pie, I'm going to add just the tiniest little backing of granny apple green. Oh, bonus points that my nails match the card. Aha, yes, except for that little white one. I have fun with my nails. Thanks for noticing, Anthony. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this granny apple green piece. The... The real red piece is a quarter less than all the edges, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is four by five and a quarter. And then what I do is I just go back and add one eighth of an inch for this very thin little frame. I like the thin frame. I think it, it doesn't take away from the, the highlight of the red, but it gives just a little nice little extra color. So we're going to use my multi-purpose glue and get the real red piece onto the granny apple green. It's fun to do that glue, you know, I really like to do that, just go kind of crazy. Because you have to be real precise when you put, when you adhere it, but you get to be crazy when you use the glue, I kind of like that idea. Okay, now we're going to glue this to the front of our card. Just get the edges in and then kind of go crazy. Okay. And there we go. Isn't that nice? I think that little very thin backing is, is very nice. I really like it. Just that rather, I should say narrow. Narrow backing. Okay. So there are our pies. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create our pies. Um, I had three pies on my sample. Where did my sample go? Let's remind ourselves of the sample because it helps me too when we look at it. Now this background piece is made from the ornate frames dies, ornate layers dies. And I went ahead and die cut that just so that it wouldn't take time because we're going to do some coloring with our Stampin' Blends. And that takes a little time. So I went ahead and cut this. This should go through the mini uh, cut and emboss machine, the little mini boss. And I think it's just so pretty. I love the lace. There are kind of a lot of little holes that come out, but if you're making a, you know, one of those cards that, that had a shaker card, all the little things that come out of here would be great for a shaker card. So I'm just gonna set that there because that shows us where we're going. Now I've gone ahead and, um, and colored, stamped and colored two pies because I knew I wouldn't have time for all th to do all three with you. So I'm just gonna do one pie, we'll do the third one here. And we're gonna get back our stamp, our pie stamp, and we're, this time we're gonna use Tuxedo Black. Now I have not cleaned my stamp, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much because the Versamark is clear. So I did this earlier, it didn't make any difference. I will clean it after. So I'm using my Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to put my little pie right on there, and then we're going to color it in. See, it didn't make a difference at all. In fact, I think it might have made the, the color be a little stronger. Okay, now we're going to use our Stampin' Blends. And here are the blends I'm using today. The pie dish is going to be re light real red. I'm going to use for the little pie dish. 
I was trying to, you know, you could have any color of pie, pie dish. It's not a tin. I've decided it's a ceramic pie dish. You guys are with me, right? Because we're making it, we can decide the color of the pie dish. It's not, it doesn't have to be in our cupboard <laughs> like a real pie. The, the pan doesn't have to be in our cupboard. We can create our own color pan. Have you ever thought about that? I think that's what's kind of fun about stamping is you can create things um, that maybe you don't have, but you might like to, or it just just for fun and being different. It's a it's the creativity. The creativity. Okay, there's our red pie dish. And now for the pie itself, I'm going to use the the um, stamp and blend that's ivory and I think it makes a pretty good pie crust what do you think there isn't that looking pretty good and I'm going to try to go around those little teardrops because we're going to put a little granny apple green in there because those are the steam holes where the apples the steam from the apple pie comes out and since it's a green apple pie I have decided that those little holes are going to be green Okay, there's our, there's the top of our pie crust, and then on the edges, you know how it usually gets a little more brown? This is the light, soft suede Stampin' Blend. And so I'm just going to color this in like this. I think it looks more like crust. You know, I tried, um, let me show you. I used crumb cake on this one, crumb cake Stampin' Blends, and I didn't feel like that the top of the pie crust looked quite as warm colored as it might so I switched to the ivory and the soft light soft suede I don't know what you think I was just playing around with different colors but they both turn out great so if you're making a, a paper pie these would be the colors to use okay and now we're gonna put in just a little green for those steam holes this is Granny Apple Green, the light. And there we go, there's our pie. And now we'll just cut it out. It's easy, thank you, Anthony. It's an easy pie to cut. Really easy if you're fussy cutting. And what I like to do is go around first and trim off all that excess um, because that can keep you from having good cuts. And now we'll go back in and um, just one trick here that I think I've told you before is try to leave about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch white. So don't cut right on the line, cut a little bit outside of it. And it helps to really outline your, uh, whatever it is you're fussy cutting, if you can do that. Sometimes I mess up a little bit, but I try. Like there, I went around that little corner and I didn't leave the, as much white as I would like to. You know, and it's an imperfect thing. But remember, you're always turning your paper or your cardstock. You're not turning the scissors. You're turning the you're turning the paper, and that really helps. There we go. I told you to be quick. Okay, so now we're ready. Whoops, my little sample is falling down. Now we're ready to put it on our card, and you can see now that that um, Versamark ink has has dried doesn't it give just a nice little pattern background there and nobody really even knows that those are pies but if they look close back in here they would see that they're pies so what I'm going to do now is adhere this pretty lacy piece with our Stampin' Dimensionals I've been using a lot of Stampin' Dimensionals lately I don't know about you guys but for some reason at Christmas time I'm raising things up more on dimensionals. Oh, and I have a little tool to show you at the end. I'm going to show you a little tool that you might want to get that I've been enjoying. So remind me of that if I don't show it to you at the end. Okay, now we're going to put this little guy on just like that and then we're ready to put on our pies. And I'm going to use two dimensionals per pie. And what I going to try to do is get the two bottom ones even. I've got two on the bottom row, kind of almost like they're on a windowsill or on a some kind of stand that they're drawing. 
So I'm going to put two down here, one on each side, and have them hang over just a little bit like that. And then let's do the next one. I just think these pies are so cute, and they are getting me excited about Christmas dinner. I don't know about you guys, but they are making me very excited about Christmas dinner. Okay, so now we're going to try to get this one. I've got it over to the left, just about the same distance that I had the other one. And I'm going to try to get it up from the, the little dots about the same amount. So that's about the best I can do there. And then we're going to put our third pie on top, like as if it were a layer on top of those two pies. Doesn't it truly make you a little bit hungry for pie? I mean, serious, I don't have any, but it's on the list. To, I don't actually make pies, so we're going to get a pie. We're going to buy a pie for our Christmas dinner. Okay. Pretty cute, huh? Now, you could just go like that without a sentiment, but I'm going to add the little bring on Christmas sentiment. And this is where we're going to use our um, embossing buddy. That's the prize this week. Okay, here's the embossing buddy, just like you can win. And what you do is you just rub it. And I'm going to try to just hold it with my fingernail there. And that gets off all the oils and anything that might disrupt the, uh, the ink and the powder from adhering. So here's our little stamp, Bring on Christmas. And I'm just going to ink that up there. And what I'm going to do, well, goodness sakes, I put my fingers on it. Did you see that? Bad, bad. Okay. And that powder is okay. It, it'll, it won't stay. And I'm going to try to get that word up to the top because I'm going to um, want to trim this real narrow. Okay. Now we've got it stamped and we're going to put the white embossing powder on it. And I just keep my embossing powder in these little containers. And then you can just, if it's a small area like that, it just works really well. <sighs> okay, we've got our powder on it. Now it's time to heat it with our heat gun. So I'm gonna ask you to just hold one minute because it might be a little bit noisy. And I'm gonna hold it at the other end. And I'm just gonna heat that a little bit until the powder melts. I like to say this is like a magic trick. New stampers love this because it's like a chemical reaction. So the trick to, to getting a little thin piece of, of paper around a sentiment is to begin by stamping up real close to the top and then you can trim the bottom you only have to trim one edge, if you know what I'm saying. I'll show you here in a minute. Let's see how this is going. I think it needs just a little bit more heat. Very cold here today, so maybe that's what's making it, the difference. I keep thinking that one isn't quite right. Okay, I think that's good. Alrighty, now everything's dry, I hope, yes? And now I'm going to pull out my little mini trimmer and I'm going to trim that real thin, like a quarter of an inch. There we go. I love that mini trimmer. I wish Stampin' Up! still sold it. I'm sorry they don't. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to flag each end now. And you know, I've shown you how to do that. You just come in and make a V on each corner. Each end, rather, from corner to center. And I will show you my little um, tool, my new little tool, in just a minute. And I think you're going to like it. For some reason, I'm not cutting quite deep enough right there. It's very hard to see. Okay, there we go. Let me get in. Oops, something's not looking right there. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> you 
you know sometimes when you do it on the air as far as on a live it doesn't come out quite the way you expect it to so it's just taking me a little bit longer there we go okay now we're going to do this one we're going to flag this end trim it down just a hair see if I can be a little better this time with that there we go okay so there's our sentiment and now we are going to we can decide where we want to put it we could put it up top maybe I'll put it up top because the last one I put on the bottom let's do that and I'm going to use a few little mini dimensionals these are all in my um, pretty adhesive pack if you're wondering all the adhesives that I've used today are in my little pretty adhesive pack if you want to purchase that just email me Peggy at prettypapercards.com oh Robin glad to have you stopping by Robin's been using some new product and showing me and oh my gosh there is so much beautiful in the new in our new spring catalog in fact, I'm just going to tell you that if you need a catalog, if you're not one of my regular customers and you need a catalog, let me know. Email me and tell me that you need a catalog and I'll get one to you. And so there's our card. Now, I did mention that we might put some bling on there. And it's good to have bling. So these are those in-color jewels that um, we're going to use. I think I'll use the soft succulent one. And let's just put a few on there. Let's see. Okay, come on over there. We'll just put a few right around just to make it look fun. I've got all kinds of layers of, of things in here. Okay, here we go. We'll just put another one up here. Bling is always good, especially around the holidays. And one over here. There, just for fun just to add a little bit of fun and there is your your pie project pretty cute huh I love this thank you Tammy good to see you now I want to show you my new uh, tool that I told you that I would tell you about and here are all of our crumbs now I have a little mini vacuum that I showed a couple of years ago that can get this up but I found something new and you know where my husband and I actually got it for food we saw it on those cooking shows and you know it's from Amazon of course um, but we saw it on those cooking shows because it scrapes up um, oh like if you were chopping green onions or something and so we got a couple and I thought oh my gosh this is going to be great for picking up those dimensional wrappers and my little papers and scraping them off my workspace and I just throw them away. What do you think about that? I don't even remember what they're called. I'll try to um, find a link and post it below for you uh, because these are, it's just some kind of little kitchen scraper and it's, <laughs> it's making you hungry. Yeah, we're talking about food. So that's your, your tool tip for the day is the kitchen scraper. And then here are our two cards, the one with the sentiment at the bottom and then the one with the sentiment at the top. Um, with the bling so I'm gonna just pull you back here thank you so much for stopping by today I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful holiday season I'll be back with you on the 22nd next Wednesday and then not on Fridays for two weeks after but the two consecutive Wednesdays because those are a little of a downtime in between the big weekends right I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I thank you for stopping by. I hope you got a few tips today. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe over there. I would really appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for stopping over.